Hey, Ray here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com, and today I'm going to show you how you can add an email sign-up form to your WordPress website. And the first step in that process is you have to pick an email provider. The one that I use is MailChimp, and they offer a free plan up to 500 contacts and 2,500 monthly email sends. And if you ever do need to upgrade, you can start for as low as $11 a month. That gives you access to more features. Today, I'm going to show you one of my client accounts. They're under the free plan. So you're going to see how to insert this into your WordPress website. And the easy way is through a WordPress plugin. And you can see all the options that you have. So you can go ahead and test out some of these if you just like an easy method to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it manually, which gives you more control. So we're going to go over into this MailChimp admin area. And you're going to want to navigate to the audience signup form section. So if you don't necessarily want to embed a form onto your website, you can just use their form builder and that lets you design it yourself and you can just copy a link and send that link to people and that's how they can sign up. But when you want to embed a form into a website and get that HTML code, just use this embedded forms option. And basically you just select the form fields. The only one that's required is an email address and you can go in and edit your form fields based on what you want to collect from your customers. So for this, I'm just going to enable this name or business option. And those are the only two that I want on this form. We also can collect phone number and address, but I don't want people to have to fill out all that information just to sign up to the email list. And we'll go to the next option here, the settings. I'm going to disable all JavaScript because it's hard to embed a piece of script code within a WordPress HTML block. And then I'll go to the next option, which is the tags. This is a way to segment your customer list. You can see I have one tag called customer here. And then the last option is the referral badge, which if you're under the free plan, you can't remove this badge here. So I think this form is good to go and we can just hit the continue button and this is gonna give us the code that we need to copy. Now the way that I recommend adding this to WordPress is through the functions.php file and that's gotta be part of a child theme. So if you don't have a child theme created, you can easily do that using a plugin called child theme configurator and you can access your child theme files from appearance theme file editor. So once your theme is activated, your child theme, you can get to functions.php from over here. And then this is where code gets added. And that plugin child theme configurator actually added this code right here. And the other snippet of code right here is what's adding this reusable blocks to the menu. So this is really how you can hack into your WordPress website, both on the back end admin side and also the front end to add some cool features. So that's what we're gonna do. And I have a piece of code open right here that's gonna turn this form code into a WordPress shortcode. So you can insert this form wherever you'd like just through an easy shortcode. So let me copy this and I'll explain it. And I mentioned here in this top line that you don't have to copy this opening PHP statement because that's gonna appear at the top of this file most likely. So let's paste this to the bottom and then we just need to paste in our form code right here. So let me grab that and copy it and I will paste it in. And so what this code does, if you look at it here, we have this function called sign up shortcode. And you can include attributes with a shortcode if you like. So I have this right here, but we don't actually use this. Right now, I'm creating an attribute called fields, and this is simple. So if you wanted to create two forms, one that was the simple form and one that had all of your form fields, you can use this attribute and then create an if else statement to insert the two different form codes. And then we got all of this code here. And then at the bottom, we're basically just returning this HTML. And then we're adding a short code called sign up. So all we have to do is add this simple short code called sign up, and it's going to insert all of our code above. Now, if you do know a little bit of HTML, this is where you can customize this form as much as you'd like. And there's CSS here, so you can style it however you'd like. In fact, there's going to be a couple of issues here. So let me update this file just with the pasted code. And I have this sign up short code added within one of my posts already. It's this image post here. So let me jump into this and you'll see on the back end we have this short code. This is how you insert it using the short code block. And then if we view this post, we'll take a look at our form and you'll see the issue with it. And that's because I have a dark background, my font text on this website is white. And that's showing up here. That must be overriding the MailChimp styles. So we're just gonna have to add a little bit of custom code CSS code, which I have within that code snippet there. Let me go back into the code here. We're going to go to appearance theme file editor to the functions.php. And I have a comment here that you can add customizations to the MC embed signup CSS code below. So I'm going to copy these two. And this is what sets the color to black using the hex code 000. 
and we add a padding of 20 pixels. So let me copy these, and you just need to find the, the code here. This is the CSS code block. It's open with this style element, and we can paste in our code anywhere within here. I'm just gonna do it right at the beginning. And the other thing that this is setting, it's setting the background to white, the font size to 14 pixels, and the font to Helvetica or Arial or just the generic sans serif, and also the width to 600. So these were some of the settings that you saw within the form builder, but you can customize this code however you'd like. So let's update this and we'll refresh our page over here and take a look at our changes. The second way that we can test adding this is just by using a custom HTML block. So I'm gonna copy this customized code here with the new CSS added to it. So you can see that there's an uh, HTML comment that says this is the end of the MC Embed signup code and we just need to scroll up to the opening block right here, begin MailChimp signup form. So we're just copying this HTML code, not the PHP code. And we're gonna jump into one of the pages. So I'll go to the about page and I'll add this to the bottom of the about page. And we just need to search for either custom or HTML. You can see it's one of my most used blocks up here. And this is where you can paste in HTML code. Now the reason that the functions.php method is superior is that if you did have JavaScript, you remember we disabled JavaScript before, I don't believe that JavaScript runs within these custom HTML blocks. I think WordPress just automatically strips that for security reasons. That's why if you do the more technical method of adding it to the functions.php, you should be able to add JavaScript there. Since we disabled it, that's not included. So we'll just update this and we can take a look at our about page. And there's our form. So that's the second method. And lastly, you can add it to the template files, which if you're using an older theme that is not capable of full site editing, you're likely gonna have PHP files. So again, if we go to appearance theme file editor, you can see we have this file header.php. This is one example of a template file. So if you wanted to add that form somewhere up in the header area, you could potentially do it with the header.php. You'd have to jump into your parent theme to see other files that you can copy over. So let me go into the parent theme and we could potentially add that to the footer.php. What you would wanna do is copy this from the parent theme over to the child theme and then edit it within the child theme so that it doesn't get overwritten when the parent theme is updated. And if you are using a newer full site editing capable theme, you can just add that into your theme using the WordPress blocks as opposed to doing it through code. So you could just do a custom HTML element within your visual template, or you can do the same functions.php short code hack and add that to your theme as well. The next thing that you'll want to do is test out this email form. So just go ahead and fill it out. And what I recommend is if you have Gmail, you can use the plus operator. So whatever your email is, you can put that in and then add plus and then any keyword or tag that you want. So I would just do something like test one. And then if you need to test this multiple times, just make that test two, test three, et cetera. You don't want to use the same email address each time because then MailChimp won't go through the same process for a new subscriber. Put in your email address, test it out, and then go back to MailChimp and go to the audience all contacts tab. And then this is where you're going to see your contact list of people that signed up. And MailChimp does have some onboarding emails. So if you go back to the signup forms and go to the form builder this time, you can select the drop down here. Right now it's on sign up form, but go through any of these potential emails, like a confirmation email if somebody subscribes. And if you go to this option too, they let you select a URL that you can send people to after they submit the form. And that's a good way to track it with Google Analytics or some other tracking service. And then lastly, once people get signed up, you can create automations that get sent to people as a welcome message or some kind of series of emails that you want to send them to sell them something, to educate them, whatever you want to do. Now, some of these automations and journeys, they do require a paid upgrade. So you don't need to get set up with these. You can just send emails manually to get started until you need to upgrade to a paid plan. So that's the basics to adding an email form to your WordPress website. And I'm guessing that most email service providers map pretty closely to MailChimp with their settings and how they operate. As long as you can get an HTML form that you can embed on your website from your email service provider, then you can use this trick to get that short code, or you can just paste it right into the custom HTML block. If you're here because you don't work with WordPress as much as you'd like and you want to get better at it, check out this free training that I put together that'll take you through all the basics of WordPress and how it works. That's at websiteprofitcourse.com slash WP101. And if you're managing a website for a client, I got a free cheat sheet, 15 tools to start your web design business that you can get from my homepage. Go to websiteprofitcourse.com for that, as well as all my blog posts and everything else I got on my website.
All the links are in the description below, as well as the code that we used in this tutorial. Last but not least, give this video a thumbs up if you learned something. Subscribe to my channel for more WordPress and freelancing videos. And if you found a different way to do this or you use a different email provider, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for making it to the end, and I'll link up a few other videos here if you want to keep on learning.